Hello everyone, Neil from BookBull here. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to use both the standard and custom word search generator inside of the BookBull Studio. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer here and get started. Now the first thing you want to do is get into the BookBolt Studio and create your first project. As you see here, I have an 8.5 by 11 project started. It's 100 pages, it's paperback, and it's got the cover and interior. So here we can see the cover, and then we have all the pages in the left menu. Now let's start with the standard word search puzzle. In order to do that, we're going to select page 1, and we're going to click on the page templates, which looks like a little puzzle icon right here. Now I already have this set to word puzzle so I can easily find it, but if this is your first time inside of the studio, you'll want to scroll down until you can find the puzzle. So I'm just going to keep this selected as word puzzle, and today we're going to focus on the word search standard and the word search custom. Now you'll notice in here there are number search standard and number search customs puzzles. These work exactly the same as word searches, so we're going to stick with that for this tutorial. Now when you first start, you want to make sure that you are doing one page at a time. So let's go ahead and start with standard. We're going to select this template, and we're going to select just a single page. This is really important so that you can test all the options and see what each option does for the puzzle that you are outputting. Now keep in mind, when you are selecting the number of pages to put puzzles on, you want to make sure that the number of pages you select lines up to the number of puzzles you're going to create. You do not want to add in the amount of solutions you may have because that's going to be an option inside of the puzzle generator. So to start, we're going to select page 1 and continue to the options. Now, like I mentioned, I highly recommend that you run puzzles on a single page first. This will allow you to test all the different options. Now, inside of the word search standard, you're going to see something that looks like this. It's broken down by puzzle, solution, title, and the words per puzzle. So let's go ahead and get started with words per puzzle. This allows you to select one word per puzzle all the way up to 40 words per puzzle. So for this example, we're going to stick it sort of in the middle at 15. You can do diagonal words and reverse words. Now the next section here we need to take into account is the actual puzzle itself. This will allow you to select how many puzzles you want per page. I recommend you keep this at one when you first get started and how they are aligned on the page. You can see with the drop downs you can put up to four puzzles per page. You can align it top left, center, bottom right as well as select your fonts, your letter sizing, the colors of your letters, if you want capital letters, line width, cell outline color, cell color, border color, etc. You'll notice there's also a section for clues. There's a lot of options in here, which is again why I recommend doing one puzzle per page, testing out the options as you go along before you create your full book. So as you see, we have selected 15 words per puzzle. I'm going to keep all of these the exact same. I'm not going to change anything. We're going to go to the solution section. Now the solution section is going to allow you to pick where do you want solutions for your puzzle to show up. Do you want it do you not want to so show a solution? Do you want it after all puzzle pages, etc.? We're going to keep it after all puzzle pages because we're just testing out the options. We're going to keep everything exactly the same here. One solution per page. We're going to line it in the center. We're going to keep everything exactly the same. Now scrolling down to the very bottom here, we also have the title section. Now the title section is going to allow you to actually add a title for your puzzle. You can do no title if you don't want your puzzles to have titles. You can use the first line in your CSV file as a title. and That's going to put the first line in your CSV that you're going to upload at the very bottom. Or you can use custom and enter in whatever you'd like right here in the title text. So in this case, if we do custom, it's going to have the puzzle, it's going to say puzzle, and then the number of the puzzle. You can also change the font and the align. Same goes for the solution title down here. Now you can see I've already uploaded a CSV file, so you can download the example and change that if you'd like, but just to preview it, here I have 100 rows, and I remember I'm going to be doing a 15 word puzzle for this example, so it's going to use the first 15 words. So now that we have our CSV uploaded and we have selected all of our options, the only option we really changed here was adding 15 words per puzzle. We can then continue to the solutions page. It's going to be pre-selected for us. So we're going to have our first puzzle and then the solutions for our first puzzle on the second page and go ahead and click submit. Now, as you see, it's going to start loading in right here and you can see it says puzzle one with the 15 words below. Here is the actual puzzle, and here is the puzzle solutions. Everything is lined up perfectly, and it looks really good. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, a lot of people have been asking about large print 
puzzles. Now let's say that you wanted to have multiple puzzles per page. How would you do that? We did quickly go over that in the options, but let me just show you how to do that. We're going to start on the third page here. We will open up the page templates. Again, I'm going to select the word search standard. This time I'm going to select two different pages. I'm going to continue to options here. I'm going to keep this at 15 words per puzzle, but this time I want two puzzles per page. And maybe on the solutions, I want four solutions per page. Now we are going to continue to the solutions. And you'll notice I'm going to have two puzzles a page here, two puzzles a page here, and I will have four solutions on this final page. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. And what it's going to do is exactly what it did previously. On page three, it's going to put the two puzzles here, a little bit small two puzzles here and we're going to have the four solutions on this page. Now something very very important is if you decide to do a large print book on Amazon that is going to be a book that has everything in 16 point font or above and as you can see with the solutions page because we had to fit in so many puzzles on one page the software is automatically going to make these fit, which means that some of these may be a lot smaller than 16 point font, which ultimately means that this is not a large print book. So always double check if you're doing large print that these are 16 point font or above. An easy way to do that once something is on the page is we will right click and edit the contents and I can select this. And if we come to the very top, we'll notice that if we go to point, this is actually 10 point font, all right? This is 10.5, this is not 16 or above, so this would not be a large print book. So now that we've kind of gone over some options and shown you how the word search standard works, now let's move on to the custom word search puzzles, and we'll start with page six. Now you see we have page six selected, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the page templates, and this time I'm going to select the word search custom option in the templates. Again, I recommend doing one puzzle per page until you are familiar and comfortable with all the options. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to select page six here and continue to the options. Now, this is going to look a little bit different, but most of the options are going to be the same as the standard word search puzzle. I'm going to have 15 words per puzzle selected, and I'm going to go to boards next. Now, boards is going to be different. Here, we can have a normal size an easy size and a hard size. You'll see easy is 10 by 10, a 20 by 20 grid, or a 30 by 30 grid. And we also allow you to have a custom size, which I'm going to show you in a second here. So we have 15 words per puzzle. I'm going to do a normal grid, so a 20 by 20. And this time I'm going to have a puzzle mask. What this will allow you to do is create a puzzle in any shape that you want. This is going to allow you to upload a PNG file, a JPEG file, or a JSON file. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. I have an image of a heart on my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. I'm going to select this heart image, and it's going to load in right here. So as you see, the heart image is selected. Only the letters that are shown will be shown on the actual board when you go to submit it. So now that we have this heart image selected, you can change the puzzle options, which are going to look very similar. The solution options, again, very similar. And the title options. I'm not going to change any of that. We have our CSV uploaded. I'm going to continue to the solutions page. Now, we see that we are going to put the solutions on page 7, so I'm going to submit that. And right away, as you can see, the actual puzzle page is now in the shape of a heart with our words below, as well as the solutions page also in the shape of a heart. Now let's go ahead and go back inside of the puzzle template and take a look at a few more of the options. We'll go to page A here. We're going to open up the page templates. We're going to select the word search custom. We're going to put this on page eight. I'm going to leave this at 15 words per puzzle. And this time I want to drag your attention over to the board size. This says don't allow the grid size selected on the boards below to change. Now keep in mind, if you have a CSV file where you have a very long word, the software could make your grid size larger to accommodate that word. So if this is checked, by default it is. It's not going to allow your board to get larger than what is selected in the size dropdown. Now we have different drop downs here. We have easy, normal, and hard. So a 10 by 10, a 20 by 20, and a 30 by 30 grid. But we also have a custom 
grid. So I'm going to remove this mask real fast, and you'll see in the custom grid, you can select the number of rows and columns that you'd like. So if you want 35 rows by 35 columns, it is now exactly the size that you have selected. Now let's go ahead and add that mask again, the heart. So I'm going to add the heart mask, which will add it to the page. And, and as you can see, there's four or five letters showing on the right, and there's a few more showing on the left. So all of these are completely customizable with the show and hide button. If I wanted to remove some of these and not show them off in the actual puzzle, I would simply select hide and then click on them or click and drag. Now let's say I did too many, that's a little bit off, right? I can change this to show and I have what, one, two, three, four, five here. So two, three, four, five, and just like that, it's it works. So if I come across, maybe I would do this, hide this and that, boom. Now it is symmetrical and everything will look good when I actually add it to the page. Now something else that you can do is we have an invert option. So right now when we have added the mask, you'll be able to see the letters in the actual puzzle. But what if I wanted all of this to be blank space and everything that is currently hidden to be the actual puzzle? Simply click on the invert invert which is going to ask you you want to invert the board data i'm going to say okay and just like that the outside of the grid is now what's going to show and there will be nothing shown on the actual puzzle with all of these you know hidden letters here so i'm going to invert this one more time because i don't think i want to do that currently and here we go we are back to what we did before now let's say that you spent some time creating this mask and you really like it and you want to use it in other puzzle projects. We also have a way for you to save this mask in the left hand menu here which will download the mask as a JSON file. You can actually upload them from the puzzle shape masks in other projects once you've saved this mask. I'm going to go ahead and save the mask and just like that you can see it downloaded the mask which I can then use in any other projects. So let's go ahead and run this puzzle. I'm going to put it on the page. I'm going to leave all the options the exact same. Scroll to the bottom, continue solutions, and I will put this on page 9. And just like that, on the left-hand side, you will see our puzzle, which is a custom size, right? And we have our solutions here. Now, one more thing I want to show off in the boards is that we can actually customize them, not by uploading a mask, but by drawing anything that you would like. So let's go over that. I'll select a new blank page here. I will open up the page templates. I'm going to select the word search custom again. One page here on page 10. And I will click continue to options. Now on this page, I'm going to remove this mask. Okay. And this time, maybe I wanted to do a custom size. Maybe I want 25 rows and 40 columns. Okay. So nice and large. Let's say that I wanted to create something that had some words in it. All I would need to do is I would need to hide certain options and then I can just start drawing here, right? So if I wanted to do a B, all right, so I'm just, I'm just doing up oh, and I don't like that. So I can just click on uh, show and I can get rid of those just like that. And I can just start drawing anything that I would like to put it on the actual page. So let's say that that is the puzzle that I wanted to create. And again, if you're drawing this for real, you'd want to spend some more time on it. I could then go through and add it to the actual board. Now let's actually close this out because I want to show one more thing before we wrap this up. Again, I did not actually publish that puzzle to the board. So I'm going to select page 10. I'm going to open up the page templates. I'm going to select the word search custom. And in this example, we're going to pick six pages. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So six pages are now selected and we're going to continue to the options. Now again, this is already filled out. We have 15 words per page as the drop down. You see I have a custom board here, but something you may have noticed is that there is an add board function. So we can add different boards and you'll be able to customize each and every one of them. So for this one, let's say I wanted a normal, I'm going to pick that heart. Okay, so we have board number one will have just a B on it. Board number two will be a heart. And if I had another board, let's say I just want this one to be a normal 20 by 20 grid. Each one of these boards has a puzzle usage count. 
Okay, so the puzzle usage count is the number of times that the puzzle will be used for the pages that you've selected. So if this one has, if board one has a puzzle usage count of one, board two has a puzzle usage count of one, and board three has a puzzle usage count of one, remember we selected how many pages? Six pages. So on page one, it will be board one, because it's going to use it a single time, then it's going to move on to the second page, where it will use this puzzle one time. It'll move on to the third page where we'll use this puzzle one time and then it will repeat itself. So that technically means that board one with the B will use that on page, pages one, four, six, ten, etc. And then board two would be on page two, five, eight, etc. Now let's say that you wanted to use board one multiple times in your project. I could set board one to three, I could set board two to say two, and I could set board one, three to one. So how would this work? On board one, it would use this three times, board two, it would use this two times, and board three, it would use this. I'm gonna set this to one time. So let's go ahead and run that to explain how that works. Remember, we set six pages, and we have three of these puzzles, two of this puzzle, and one of this puzzle. So let's go ahead and continue to solutions. We have puzzle one, two, three, four, five, six, solution one through six. We're gonna go ahead and submit it. So as you see in the left-hand menu here, we're going to have our six pages filled out. Remember, we started on page 10, and we had that board selected as a three for the puzzle count. So we're going to have a you know puzzle, we're going to have the same puzzle here and the same puzzle here. It uses it three times in a row before moving on to the heart, which we added a two, a puzzle count of two, so one, two. And then we have this one, which we only had one. And then we have all of our solutions pages that follow. This cycle will repeat itself. So let's go back in and take one more look. We're just going to select a single page for this one. So this cycle will repeat itself, board one, board two, board three. We have the puzzle uses count as three, two, and one. This will repeat itself over and over again for the number of pages that you've selected. So that is how the puzzle usage count works. Now lastly, before we wrap up this tutorial, if you ever get stuck anywhere, we have put together some great resources outside of this tutorial video. And the way to get to there is from the learning menu. So if you go to the learning menu up top and you click on the book bolt FAQ, what you wanna do is scroll down in the frequently asked questions to the very bottom and you will see these how-to articles. So this is really about how to put together that CSV file if you're ever getting stuck. So how can you determine how many characters in a cell of your CSV file? This is important to make sure that your words fit into the puzzle that you are creating. We have this article, how can you make a list of words be random instead of alphabetical? We have this article about making blank rows. We have this article to be in lowercase, proper case, or uppercase. And we also have this one to remove any hyphenated words. So if you ever get stuck anywhere and the question you're asking is not inside of this tutorial, you want to make sure you go to the learning menu and then the FAQ and you can always search for any questions you have. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys found that helpful and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.